Welcome back, you join us once again for what is sure to be a tasty dose of Tutorial Tuesday. This week, we're going straight in. We're talking five tips to instantly improve your photography and to make things even better. These are not going to be your kind of standard YouTube five photography tips, you know, shoot at sunset, choose the right time, the right location, all that kind of stuff. We've done that. We've done that. I'm not going to pretend we haven't done that. We've all done that. And obviously, yes, sunset looks amazing. Let's talk about five different tips that you don't hear in every single YouTube video about how to instantly, and they will instantly, improve your photography. Let's just dive straight in. Tip number one, make a conscious choice, make a deliberate choice with your composition. It doesn't matter if you're following the rules or if you're breaking the rules. It doesn't matter if you're setting something up for the rule of thirds, something super basic, putting something on one of the vertical lines of the rule of thirds. It doesn't matter if you're just changing your horizon to match the rule of thirds. It doesn't matter if you're deciding to center your subject up because you think that's what's going to look best. Whatever it is, as long as you're making a deliberate, conscious choice, it will improve your photography, no matter what. It is the simple act of making that choice which will improve your photography, not just overall, not just in the long term, but it will instantly make that photo that you're taking a better photo because you have put more thought into it. You have consciously decided on the end result of the photo rather than just a snapshot of whatever it is. This applies to landscape, portrait, street, food, product, any type of photography you can think of, a conscious choice will always beat out just a kind of mindless snapshot. You know, if you're taking a portrait, you want to leave loads of headroom, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I always talk about, you know, minimizing the headroom above the head, but if you want to have loads of headroom, that's absolutely fine, as long as that was a decision and not just a mistake that you didn't think about and then you took the photo and you got back and go and put it on the computer, you get to edit it. Oh no, there's loads of headroom. Maybe I'll crop it, maybe whatever. If you make the decision at the time, it doesn't matter if you're following the rule or breaking the rule, that's gonna make it a better photo. Tip number two is to think about layers, to think about your background, to think about your foreground when you're taking your photo. So whether it's landscape, whether it's portrait, again, street, anything really you can think of, you wanna think a little bit about depth. Now I'm borrowing pretty heavily from last week's video. That first one was basically the end of last week's video, and this is basically the entire content of last week's video. But essentially, if you can layer up your photo, if you can think about your photo in terms of your foreground layer, your midground layer, which is usually your subject, and then your background, which might be a sky, it might be something behind your subject, it might be whatever the depth is behind, that's gonna improve your photo. If you can add a foreground element, not always, but a lot of the time that's gonna help frame your subject, it's gonna help add a visual interest to the foreground, it's gonna add depth to your photo, which often looks fantastic. Same with the background. If you can think about, okay, the sun in the sky, I need to think about the placement of that. If I just move three feet to the left, the sun is gonna change position in the sky, it's gonna look fantastic. That's gonna make for a better photo. Thinking about your layers like that, foreground, midground, background, will, for the most part, massively help with your photography. And even if you decide actually to really flatten the image, to not have too much going on, to not have a foreground element, to have a very plain background, go for a minimalist look, Absolutely. In fact, really, I'm kind of repeating the first tip. And really, I suppose every tip in photography is just the first tip, but a little bit more detailed in a specific direction. So just thinking about your layers, your background, your foreground, it's going to improve your photography. Okay, third tip. Get out of your comfort zone. Shoot something completely new, completely different, and try it out. For example, I went out the other night. In fact, this was a few weeks ago now, but I went out and I shot a photo of a car at night. I didn't take any lights. I literally had my camera and my tripod. So I didn't have any kind of flash, off-camera flash, any continuous lighting, anything like that. I was just going on what I was kind of able to do. I'd never really taken car photos before. I certainly hadn't done it at night. And I certainly hadn't done it without any lights. Madness. But it was a great experience to get out of my comfort zone, to push myself, to try and think, okay, how am I going to expose this? Do I want lights on, lights off? Do, what do I want to do with regards to the overall exposure? Do I want to have more of the background kind of lit up? How am I going to do this? I'm going to shoot multiple exposures. I'm going to do lots of different things like that, blend them together in Photoshop. I kind of took experiences learned from night sky photography, landscape photography, product photography. I didn't have lights, so I had to compensate for that somehow. And I managed to put it all together. I'm really, really happy with the results. Absolutely. But it was a really interesting interesting experience to push me out of my comfort zone. It can be really easy as photographers to become, you know, accustomed to certain things, landscape, portrait, whatever it might be, and certain things that make it easier to take those photos. But that doesn't always push us as photographers. Again, I'm borrowing quite heavily from a video a few weeks ago we did about it's okay to fail. And absolutely, this is the point here. It's okay to fail. Try something new, learn something from it, 
do something badly and then next time do it better and then the next time do it better again i love that kind of experience i love working to improve my craft so the best way to do that is to try something completely new take yourself out of your comfort zone if you always shoot landscape try and shoot an environmental portrait try and add a subject to your frame if you always do street photography push yourself to do some landscape think about composition think about maybe do a portrait not not a street portrait but just a straight up portrait see how it goes see what you can do with it see what you can do with the composition what you can do with the lighting all that kind of stuff push yourself to do something new something different and you definitely will become a better photographer tip number four a bit of an easier one know the weather know the light now easier said than done and it sounds super simple but just checking the weather the day before you're thinking about going out just checking the weather a week before you're thinking about going out picking the day where the weather is what you want it to be so sunset you want to have clear skies right you don't want to have a rainy day because sunset's not going to look anything like you're thinking it's going to look on a big overcast dark horrible day but maybe you want to go out and get that stormy shoot. So look for the day where it's going to rain, where you might get thunder and lightning, where you might get all that kind of stuff. Find the drama a little bit ahead of time. Then you can plan out a location. You can plan out what you want to take the photo of. You can think about the light. Now, obviously planning plays a huge part in this, but also reacting to things. I happen to sit working on my computer when I'm editing these videos or editing photos with a window right here. And I can look out and I can see what is the weather doing? What is the light doing? And if I think, Oh, this is getting interesting now. We've got big dark clouds on one side of the sky and the other side, there's a bit of sun. Well, I'm going to head out. I'm going to try and take a photo somewhere with a landscape to take advantage of that light because that's going to look fantastic. If it looks like sunset's going to be fantastic, I can see it out of the window and I can head out, find a good location, maybe do some sunset portraits. And that's just about reacting. So absolutely planning ahead, checking the weather, checking the kind of light and all that kind of stuff, but then also reacting to quick changes and actually deciding, okay, I want to take advantage of this. I want to go out. I want to get this and making that happen for yourself. The final tip, tip number five, is to edit your photos and to learn from what you either missed at the time, which you're able to add in, or maybe you're not able to add in. Take it as far as you can, see what you can do with the photo and learn from it as to what you would like to capture next time. So for example, this photo started out looking like this. I wanted it to look like the final edited photo. Actually, I'm really happy with the original photo and how it kind of ended up, but it's a good thing to be able to learn from to actually push that edit pretty much as far as you can, all the way to where you wanted the original photo to be. Now, obviously, some people will think this is not photography, this is kind of going into graphic design and art and stuff like that. That's absolutely fine. And you don't necessarily have to use that final photo as kind of a portfolio piece. That doesn't matter at all. But just pushing it to that level will teach you a little bit about not only editing, absolutely, pushing things further like that, again, out of your comfort zone, will teach you a little bit about editing, which you might then be able to take some of those techniques and apply them to photos in the future. But also, it will actually teach you a little bit about the composition and the light and all that kind of stuff that you were looking for at the time. You know, And then that's something you can look for in the future, something you can kind of work on to actually get the original photo to look much more like you had intended. Actually pushing that edit as far as you can is a great opportunity to learn something about what the photo you took didn't have in it and what you could put in there next time. So those are five different tips. Hopefully those are slightly different to the normal kind of tips you see on YouTube. Add any more that you like down in the comments though, because I'd love to hear your tips for instantly becoming a better photographer, instantly improving your photography. And that's the key here. These are things you can do immediately, which should very much give you an immediate difference in your photos. But let me know down in the comments if you have any others. If you have any questions, pop them down there as well. Of course, there's a full list of all the kit used for this video, as well as all the photos down in the description. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it as well, because of course, there's loads of content on its way. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.